Welcome back. So in this video we'll be covering the attempts of making homemade bullet resistant glass. As many of you may have seen, I had some of my first attempt samples tested by YouTuber OneShot TV. I'll leave a link in the description to the video. Definitely go check it out. It's a good example of where I started and where it's going. And where we're trying to get is to a UL752 standard of level 8, which is a 2.5 inch thick piece of glazing that can withstand multiple shots of the 308. However, that might be asking quite a bit from a homemade bullet resistant glass sample. So we're going to go ahead and start with level 5, which is a single shot of 308. And to do that, these samples were basically made with layered pieces of glass, acrylic, and polycarbonate. And just so everyone knows, Lexan is just a brand name of polycarbonate. So, and all these were held together by either laminated film, silicone, or resin. So I came up with three different samples uh, with different thickness of glass, acrylic, polycarbonate, different configurations. And um, these are three samples that I thought could achieve this level five goal and have exceptional clarity. So let's head to the range and see if we can stop the 308 FMJ. Okay, so we're back at the range with the bulletproof glass. We have our three samples at two and a half inches thick. We're trying to achieve a UL752 rating of level five, which is a single shot of 308, 150 grain 308. And we do have one other one and a half inch that we want to go ahead and try to uh, uh, see if a 44 mag will stop. And as you can see, the clarity on these are really, really good. Even all, of, even the two and a half inch, we have some incredible clarity. I don't know if it's giving you a, a shot of the background or not, but let me bring it in just so you can kind of see the clarity. We did have one that had quite a few bubbles, but it's a test plate, so we're gonna go ahead and see what it is. Each one of these has a different composition. One is all plastic, one is glass and plastic, and one is more glass and different plastic, bigger plastic, what, what gets you not. But it's all annealed glass, acrylic and polycarbonate in certain combinations and at the end of the video i'll go ahead and show you those combinations and how we built them and put them together so let's go ahead and see if they can achieve level five but first i want to give the inch and a half plate a try so those that have watched the episode of one shot saw that i was able to stop a 44 mag with the same amount of thickness and all plastic plate. So what's different about this one is we are using about 80% acrylic and only 20% polycarbonate. Whereas the one that I sent to him had about 50% acrylic and 50% polycarbonate in certain configurations. However, with this sample with more acrylic, as you could see here, it just was not able to withstand the 44 Magnum. Uh, the sheer amount of energy just took apart the acrylic. So let's go on to the rifle plates. Okay, so we got our first of three plates down there to try to stop the 150 full metal jacket, two and a half inches thick. This one is all plastic. We went ahead and got a chronograph. We're gonna try to get a reading on this. We're gonna go ahead and record down there. And let's see if our first shot can stop. Okay, there's our shot. Did we go through? Well, look at that. We did not go through. All plastic, acrylic and polycarbonate, able to stop 308. Incredible. On to the next one. 
All right, so we're one for one already. The polycarbonate and acrylic had two and a half inches thick, was able to stop the 308. We were able to hit 2690 feet per second. So now we have a few layers of glass, a thick piece of acrylic, and some polycarbonate in the back. And for those that ask, polycarbonate is Lexan. Lexan's just the name brand of polycarbonate. So let's see if a little bit of glass makes a difference in this. Clear. All righty. So this one also had film on the front of it, but it doesn't even look like it went into the acrylic. Let's take a look at it from the back. That is, that is crazy. Holy smokes. This one might be able to take more than one shot. It didn't even come close. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and try the third plate and then we'll go from there. All right, so we're down to the third plate and uh, they're impressing me. I'm not gonna lie, these things are impressing me. This one we're gonna shoot and uh, I may not do a center shot, I may do a top right shot and see if I can get three three shots on this. Normally in the UL752 testing, I believe they use a 12 by 12 inch sample. These are all smaller than that. This is our largest one and it's still only about nine by nine. So we're gonna try to get three shots on this one, but we're gonna see if we can stop one first. So here we go. Okay, go a little bit more top right. Clear. That did not go through. And it's safe to say, I think it can hit. I think it could take two more hits. So we're gonna leave that where it's at and uh, maybe reposition the GoPro to the front and we'll go from there. Okay, so we have the same plate up there. Two more rounds of 150 grain full metal jacket. We're gonna head on the lower left and the top left. This plate wasn't really designed for that, but it is handling more than I thought it could. So let's see if we can't uh, give it a few more shots. Okay, first shot, lower left, here we go. Next shot, upper left. All righty, clear. Let's go see what we did. Okay, so here was the first shot. It was the second shot. Um, needless to say, it was compromised before we did this. Let's come around the back and see if we were able to stop it. Well, what do you know? Three shots. Here's the second, I'm sorry. Yeah, here's the second, here's the third, and the first was there. The first did not, didn't even touch the acrylic. It looks like the glass was able to hold that back. And then you could see the second and third 
Definitely the third had a quite a bit of fracturing of that acrylic, but let me take it off of here so you can see. No pass-throughs, three shots, 308, and nothing went through. Okay, so we put the second plate back up there and we decided to hit it with a heavier grain 308. So this is a 168 grain hollow point. Uh, and uh, we're gonna see if, if a little bit more energy on target has any difference. We've got the chrono here. We're gonna go ahead and try to get a reading. And uh, let's see what it does. I think I'll go top. Top left, I think, it's kind of got a not compromised spot, so. Okay, so here we go. 168 grain. Woo! <laughs> okay, clear. Okay, so this is a good internal of the plate. <laughs> Obviously we hit it here with the 168 grain. These are the two layers of glass that we had. This is a polycarbonate layer before we hit acrylic, but let's go to the back and see if it went through. And wouldn't you know, it did not. But you could definitely see the fracturing of the acrylic. That took a hit. Let me go ahead and show you from the other side. Maybe with some sunlight through it, you could see how much of a hit that took. But it did not go through. Beautiful. That's a success. Back here at the shop, and before I give you the breakdown of how I made those plates, I wanted to give you a back background of how many attempts and how many different materials I've used. Right here you can see, this is a many layers of Lexan brand polycarbonate, uh, which I shot with a nine millimeter, uh, and it was stopped, I would say about three quarters of the way in. Uh, I used simple silicone adhesive to adhere those together. Clarity was not good. Then I moved on to acrylic and polycarbonate. And as you can see, clarity was much better. But the problem with this material is getting it to adhere to itself. Here you can see I just drilled holes and added bolts. Um, yes, I was able to stop a nine millimeter right after the polycarbonate an eighth of an inch in. So that taught me that acrylic did make a difference in stopping the projectile. So knowing this, I decided I would be using polycarbonate, acrylic, and glass in an attempt at stopping the 308 with these bullet resistant panels. So the only thing left is to adhere them to each other. So let's go over that now. I used two main methods, one with the UV resin and one with a combination silicone adhesive slash mixture. So for clarity and just overall ease of use, one of my favorite materials was this UV resin. And while it doesn't grab the materials together as well as PVB, which is the standard for most laminated glass, it is very easy to use. You have time to get any air pockets, bubbles out that you might need. You can see here, we just press it and move it around, do what we need to just essentially to get all the air pockets out the bubbles. And then you just turn on the UV light. You turn that on for about 10 minutes and it cures to a point where you're ready to add another layer. 
And now because the two layers aren't adhered to each other quite as well, that's the importance of the frame. Knowing that I was going to be putting a metal frame on this, I was able to give myself a little bit of a break and use something that was a little bit more impact resistant, but uh, maybe not as sticky to keep the two layers together. Now for that stickiness, I want to go ahead and show you what I used next. Okay, so this next method is a little bit more involved. Uh, using two scrap pieces of glass, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do. You got to make sure each piece is clean first. So just a little Windex. And this is the Gorilla construction adhesive that I use, the Clear Gorilla brand. And then I use mineral spirits to thin it down. I believe it's a little too thick as it uh, comes out of the bottle. So I thin it down with a 50% to 100% ratio of mineral spirits. And the thinner that the material is, uh, the less bubbles or air you can entrap between the two panes of glass. So as you see it coming out of the, the tube right here, it is thick. Uh, I need to use basically a popsicle stick here to take it off and you can see even holding it uh, at 45 degrees, it just doesn't move very well. So I go ahead and just kind of eyeball what I believe is a good amount of mineral spirits to thin out the solution of construction adhesive. Now, I am going to speed this up, but the mixing does take a fair amount of time. I'd say roughly two, three minutes of constant mixing to get you a good viscosity to be able to spread that out nicely on the pane of glass. You know, you want it something in the consistency of syrup, a light syrup. So once you've mixed it a few minutes and you get the consistency that you're looking for, I just go ahead and spread it right there directly on one side of the, the glass. Um, doesn't look like much, but what I end up doing is using the same popsicle stick to spread the adhesive. Um, you don't need much. You, you just need to cover the whole layer. So I spread all the adhesive through each pane of glass. And then I put the next pane of glass right on top of it, almost like a screen protector. You go from one side to the other and you have to move it back and forth. Make sure you get all the bubbles out. And once you've pressed it, um, I do want, you know, you have to be cautious with glass. This isn't something you can clamp down. It will fracture, it will break. So hand pressure, light hand pressure to get all those bubbles out. Uh, takes a little bit more time, but as you move them to the corners, excess material comes out. But if you do it correctly, you can see this is also a very favorable method with much more adhesion and very few bubbles. So these are the two methods I use to adhere the materials that you saw in the video. I am planning on making another attempt uh, around a two and a half inch to three inch to stop a 50 BMG. That should be coming up in the next few weeks to month. But thank you for coming along on this journey and like, subscribe, let me know what you think in the comments uh, if there's anything else you want me to try. Until the next one.